Welcome everybody to another Learn Squared live stream. You got Nick with Learn Squared here, and I'm joined by Lewis Carrasco. Welcome, Lewis, to the show. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Guys, we got a awesome show for you today. We're going to be showing you a whole bunch of stuff. First off, we're premiering a new course. You see it right here in front of you. The finished images from Lewis Carrasco's Rethinking Weapon Design are up on your screens in front of you here. There's a whole bunch of deliverables that came out of this course. We're going to sort of break down the process of how these got made. We're going to talk about the course itself. And of course, we're going to premiere the course trailer for you guys in just a sec. So look forward to that. In addition, we're going to be doing a live demo. Lewis is here graciously providing his time to do a live demonstration of the techniques featured in the course. And on top of that, he's going to be creating a brand new concept design that is not even, not only is it never seen before, but it also is not even in the course. This is a totally new thing. That's awesome. So guys, get excited. I see there's a whole bunch of excitement in that chat already. I want to see some, uh, some hype in that chat. Post some uh, hearts, post some smiley faces. We already got a, a whole bunch of emojis in that chat, but let's pump it up even more. I want to see some weapon emojis in that chat. This is a weapon design course we're talking about here. <laughs> Let's get, I think we got a sword. There's a dagger. I don't, I'm not fully up to Very date on cool. all my emojis, but post some emoji, <laughs> emojis in that chat. We got type A music in here. Welcome type A music. Twin Sane 8, good to see you. Welcome. Gandhi, welcome to the show. Pierre Olivier Martel. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but welcome to the show. Guys, uh, welcome everybody. Marcel Zero as well in that chat. A lot of hype in there. It's good to see. And Lewis, you know, I think the best way to start this off, let's teach everybody about this course by uh, world premiering the course trailer. What do you think? I think that's very exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited for everyone to see it. All right, let's take a look. Ladies and gents, rethinking weapon design. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Rethinking weapon design, guys. You just saw it right there. Let us know what you think of the course. It is just incredible. Uh, I have seen this course. I have been blown away by it. The, the speed and efficiency with which Lewis gets in there and just creates so many amazing things uh, it is pretty insane. So, Lewis, can you just do a quick little overview of what your unique process is like for creating these weapons? Yeah, you know, a lot of it is going back to the fundamentals that was taught, like in school, which is like silhouette and, and really creating interesting, unique shapes and then really applying reference, which is something that I always struggled with. So I, I wanted to uh, address that in the tutorial. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I think a lot of people struggle with that kind of stuff. And I, I think it's really important to sort of um, really uh, cultivate your your creative side. Like, wh what are some things that you really do to, to get yourself in the zone? You know, I think, like, at first, like, when I start sketching, I, I really try to think past of what the basic first ideas are because I remember when I was in school I would just think of some initial like daggers or weapons but then I really try to imagine how far I can push stuff and I'll start looking at reference and start challenging myself with how far I can go with a design and I get really excited by that. 
And, you know, it's an interesting uh, point that you make about challenging yourself. I feel like throughout the course, there's a bunch of times where you say, like, you know, I, I wonder if I could turn this, like, clay pot into a into a a, a, a sword or something. And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, you actually can and do <laughs> a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. And it's totally possible, right? I, I noticed that whenever I was, like, finishing designs, like, on the job and gathering photo reference, I would start to do these, like, happy accidents where I would be overlaying, like, a a texture like yeah like a pot or something like that but then I would look and be like hey you know that'd actually be a really cool idea for like a blade rather than what I was going to do and then I started going from there and it just I started creating like these wild designs that I never thought of so uh we got some hype in that chat first of all before we jump into our demo today Pierre Olivier Martel saying wow it's exciting Gandhi saying awesome content we're really glad to hear that you guys are excited about the course yeah. and you're going to be finding out even more about Lewis's uh, workflow coming up in the demo here. But uh, before we do that, I'll just uh, mention to everybody that if you have any questions or anything you want to know about the course, I'm sure from watching that trailer, seeing some of these like very unorthodox ideas of how to like really just spark your creativity and get things, uh, get things moving, I'm sure that you might have a lot of questions about how this workflow works and how you could best um, how you could best take advantage of those ideas. So make sure you post any questions you have either about the workflow, about Lewis's art, or about Lewis's uh, you know professional uh, career and and jobs and stuff like that. Anything, any professional questions go on here. We're we're here to talk about art. We're here to talk about the art world. So uh, post that up in the in the chat. And uh, awesome, Lewis. Uh, what do you think? You think it's time to do some demonstrating? Yeah, I think it'd be good. Good idea. Let's get started. All right, let's switch over to Lewis's screen. Lewis, close any private windows. This is your last chance. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're on a uh, remote feed of Lewis's screen now. Uh, as you can see, Lewis is in Photoshop. One, one thing that I think is um, pretty fascinating about this workflow, it, uh, Lewis, is that you're only using Photoshop. Yeah, you know, um, whenever I sketch, I just um, really try to stay in Photoshop and not uh, use 3D, which is opposite of what I did when I first started out. Um, I used to build things out in 3D all the time and, and then just kind of try to refine that. But I realized that I was spending so much time working on the design after having put in so many hours into the 3D and I was burning myself out. And uh, for this tutorial, I really wanted to show everyone how to start a sketch and how to finish a sketch before leaving the program. And when I started doing that myself, I start I just started realizing I was I just had like a new portfolio piece all the time just because I was so excited about the design. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty inspiring to see what you can do in this software, and it's interesting too because you're using a lot of techniques that are you know not what somebody would traditionally think of you know when you're saying oh i'm going to design a you know an axe a do double-sided axe or something and it's like oh okay well uh you know i would probably sketch that out i would probably you know figure out the dimensions of everything i would you know try to figure out the logistics of how this thing where does the handle go how do you know how does the weight distribute it all that stuff and your workflow almost turns all of those aspects on their head um, and really just lets people create things so quickly. Um, so the first step, as we're seeing here, um, just starting with a silhouette and, and what you talk about in the course is uh, pretty fascinating of like not really even thinking about the, the mechanics of how this thing works in the silhouette phase. Can you talk about that a little bit uh, as yeah. you're working here? Yeah. So, um... Just so you guys know, like as I make the silhouette, uh, I'm sure you're all used to the, um, I guess, more traditional way of making silhouette, which is just an aggressive, very bold shape. Um, I still use this method, but when I was in school, I would, I would do this all the time. Like my assignment would be to make like 50 silhouettes uh, for whatever it is that I was working on, and then I had to design from there. Uh, I <laughs> I'm not sure if it's because I was so naive, but like I really never understood exactly what I was doing when I did that because 
I noticed when I learned 3D, I really have to think of things in the round, like in 3D. So um, when I start like this, um, it's just to give myself an impression of what I want to do. Just like th this is the mood, this is the feeling. And then uh, sometimes, like you'll see in the tutorial, um, if you add a little depth and then start applying reference, it really takes things to the next level to the point where you'll see a finished design, like right at the beginning of your sketch. And it, it, it really blew my mind when I started working this way. That is pretty impressive. And, it, you know, if you ever wanted to go into a, uh, another field, maybe you wanted to become a psychologist, you have some free uh, Rorschach tests. Right. Yeah, I'm absolutely. What do you, <laughs> except what do you see here? It's like, oh, I see a grenade. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's all yeah, weapons. Uh-oh. <laughs> but um, so it, can you talk a little bit about like what, uh, going into the project right now, you know, we're at the absolute earliest stage. What do you know about what you're going to create? Do you have an idea of the, of the class of weapon or are you open to different things if they show up or how does that work? Yeah, so uh, whenever I start, I I just know what the initial idea is going to be. So it's like, in this case, it's going to be a grenade. Now, a, gr a grenade can be a, a million things, but keep in mind, when you first start, the first thing that you think of is a, a spherical or an oval shape. And maybe if you've seen a lot of different types of grenades, you'll see like a World War II grenade where it has like a long handle or something like that, or maybe something that you've seen in Gears of War or another game, like if you really think about it, but usually that default uh, idea is stuck in your head. And uh, actually originally for this reference page, I had some grenades in here, but I, I also wanted to challenge you all uh, to not see that initially. So I don't wanna see that. All I know is I have to follow a set of rules. Number one, uh, I need to have something that has a bold shape of um, just like a grenade does, right? Like it has a bold shape, like there's a bulb or something like that that indicates the explosive part. There's a place that you grab and throw it. And maybe if you want, there's a place where you activate the grenade or there's some kind of indicator that it's gonna explode. And I really try to limit myself to those things. And I just don't restrict myself. I just, I just tell myself, just go crazy. Think of whatever you can think of, and then we'll make sense of it after you create the initial shape. You know, I uh, really identify with uh, Fasali Lafia's comment in here, and also welcome to the show. And I'm, I'm going to assign Fasali Lafia a voice. I don't know what your voice sounds like, but I'm just going to add a voice to their comment. Fantasy project loading. <laughs> I totally feel like like seeing this kind of workflow, it immediately starts making you your creative juices start flowing. I'm sure all of you guys in the audience feel the same way, where uh, e even seeing Lewis start out in this early stage of the process and, you know, applying a lot of these photo textures and and really getting creative with it, it uh, it starts sparking the ideas. So I I'm just going to throw an open question to anybody in the chat uh, who is working on a project. What are you working on? Let, let us know while you're while you're going what you're working on and uh you know what you dream of working on uh you know if you are utilizing these new workflows that you're seeing in this uh demonstration here yeah i'm curious too let us know uh pierre olivier montel welcome uh with your first comment in the chat uh i don't know if it's already been answered but where do you get your photos and that's a great question. I think that uh, there, there is a major part of the course that goes into, um, there's actually two parts of the course uh, that go yeah. into this process. And, uh, you know, I'll just sort of field this one so I, I can let Lewis <laughs> work for, for sure, a little bit. For sure, for sure, yeah. Um, but so there's a section in the course that deals with finding inspiration uh, through other artists and, you know, really trying to identify what about their art feels unique uh, finding artists who do unorthodox things with their designs, uh, you know, go outside the box with their designs, uh, and really just collecting those so you can inspire yourself. And then on top of that, um, there is a section of the course specifically dedicated to, you know, going through Pinterest, going through, you know, all the various uh, apps and stuff, and, and actually finding your, your photo texture references. 
Um, and so but one thing about that, I'll, I'll let you, uh, you know, take it from here in a second, Lewis, but um, with, with finding your photos, there's a sort of interesting philosophy that you take about using this whole process um, yeah, that we yeah. went into at the beginning of this course. You never refer to the what you're doing as photo bashing. Yeah, it's yeah, photo that's a big texturing. One. Yeah, and so can you talk a little bit about the the distinction between photo bashing and photo texturing? And uh, I just want to say thank you, Pierre Olivier, for the great great question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that's like a big thing that comes up often. So. Um, when I've uh, used the technique of like, let's say photo bashing, I've always known it of, I'm just gonna grab uh, like this buckle here and I'm gonna attach it to uh, this uh, bulb here. Then I'm gonna grab a photo of a grenade and replace the bottom part here and kind of marry them with some lighting and massaging of, of paint. And that's going to be my design. Maybe I'll change the color or something like that. And I guess you do technically get a, a new design out of it. But often, I, I'm sure you all see this, right? When you when you look at an image that's been photo bashed, it looks like it's been photo bashed, right? Like it has all these very familiar uh, photo references that they grabbed and it's less appealing um, because, you know, it's just a series of like collaged images. Um, as for this, um, it's very unrecognizable from the original source that I grabbed. And I, it's my responsibility to uh, marry all of these images together and to create something that's totally original. Like for instance, uh, right now, if we look at where I started, so let me hide all this, that's where I started. And all I'm do is I feel like I'm revealing what's actually there. And, and, the original image for uh, the texture I just placed is this right here. It's just some, I actually don't know what this is. <laughs> it could be like, a, it could be a teapot um, on top of a section of a model kit um, that just had this really nice round shape to it. And um, I felt like that the color and everything fit really well. But in my head right now, I'm envisioning this like, grenade that belongs in like the world of gears of war or something like that i you know it, it's really interesting to see these photo textures in their original form and then seeing them in you know the form where they are uh now because it's yeah i cannot i can see where the you know handle shape is but i cannot recognize you know, like that original texture in your existing thing, like you're completely yeah. changing things so quickly. Um, and, and speaking of quickly, one thing I think is really interesting about your technique is um, that you're actually using white space as a painting technique. So you're not like, if, for example, I, I'm not sure if you just did it right there, but you talk about it in the course where, so ladies and gents, when you see him erasing pieces like that, instead of actually going to the layer and erasing it, uh, a lot of times he's actually just painting with white on top of the painting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you talk I call about it laziness. That? <laughs> I call it laziness. I'm just so lazy to use a mask or to use the actual eraser. Um, for me, I just, I just want to move on as quickly as possible because it's, it's important to me to stay interested in whatever it is that I'm painting. Um, if I, if I spend a lot of time worrying about, my layers or anything like that, or how clean my canvas is, then um, I just I just completely lose my drive for whatever it is I'm doing. So um, I'll paint with white, and at the end it becomes easier to grab the whole object as a as a selection and paste it into a new layer. That's really fascinating. And just like the idea of creativity is a spark and a and then a flame that you are trying to keep alive, you know, and like speed is a part of that i guess like you you want to make sure that nothing hinders or like blows out that flame you want to keep it going yeah exactly exactly and um yeah you know it, it's i feel like it's like a constant battle right like even now i'm sure everyone is imagining this handle being like a leather grip or some kind of metal grip or something like that and that's where i'm like 
looking at these reference images and I'm just like, you know what, this section looks cool. This is going to be a handle. I don't know how, I have no idea how, but that's part of the fun and excitement of, of doing this process. Love that. We have a, a bunch of comments coming in. Thank you everybody for your comments. And uh, it, you know, a, anybody who asked a comment, don't worry, we have not forgotten about you. We will uh, always get to those in time. So keep posting those comments in the chat and, uh, and we will answer you all by the end of the show. So uh, on here, uh, Fasale Lafia saying, uh, talking about our question before of like, what uh, projects are you working on and stuff like that, saying, using Vouter's uh, Learn Squared course, awesome, to create a character for a cyberpunk based project for my portfolio. That sounds amazing. With Lewis's awesome. class now, maybe do a Witcher based project. Here I come CD Project Red. Love that. Oh, yeah, man. awesome. That's It'll so definitely cool. help. <laughs> Especially oh, with like a fantasy project. Yeah, absolutely. I love Witcher stuff. <laughs> I'm a sucker for any anything Witcher, anything Witcher related. So you, you had the right answer there for Sally Lafia. Yeah, I'm awesome. saying combined with the creature course, it's going to be fire. That is, I love oh, to yeah. see the enthusiasm and love to see creative people sharing their creative ideas. Everybody else, anybody else who uh, is, is working on a project or who uh, is inspired by what you're seeing today to work on a project, let us know in that comment section what you are working on or want to work on. Um, we also have uh, Asodbol is saying, uh, welcome to the chat by the way what uh weapon are we designing here today so uh for anybody who is just joining the show uh let's actually introduce for anybody just joining the show everything that's going on today we have mr lewis carrasco here on the show who is demonstrating the techniques of his newest learn squared course called rethinking weapon design we just announced this today uh, we just world premiered the course trailer and on the stream today, Lewis is doing sort of an artistic challenge because uh, he is live de uh, live designing a brand new type of weapon. So this is going to yeah. be a a type of grenade, a uh, going for a never seen before look for a grenade. And exactly, I can exactly. say I've never seen it before. This looks awesome. Yeah. And so this is a big part of your process as well, which uh, you very much encourage um, taking what you're working on, duplicating it, moving it over to the side, you know, creating new iterations, and then not only creating new iterations, but like continuously switching back and forth between those iterations. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I noticed um, early on, and, and I know everyone can relate to this, that I would start to get precious with my designs and I would be scared to uh, deviate from whatever was working. And I feel like that was happening right now. Um, so usually what I do is I, I copy it over, I do a copy merge, copy it over, and I let myself go wild with the alternate version because this version will be safe, right? I mean, it's preserved. And I'll go crazy with this one and I'll do this thing where I'll try to make the new version my favorite. And then I'll toggle to the other one. And I'll be like, oh no, this one, this one needs a lot of work. And then I'll work on this until it's my favorite. And then I'll kind of play them against each other. Uh, but I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll really try to just let myself uh, have fun, make mistakes, uh, do something crazy and uh, yeah, just have a good time. A little bit of a healthy artistic competition. It's Lewis versus yeah, exactly. Lewis. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. This is amazing. I'm so excited that uh, that we have you on the show and that we're we're doing this live demo. Thank you for coming in and, and doing this. This is amazing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. And uh, since we were just, uh, you know, introducing the show for anybody who has not uh, been here since the beginning, it might be a good time now to uh, jump into the course trailer for anybody who has not seen it yet. So let's... Uh, Take this moment to go back, take a look at the course trailer uh, for anybody who hasn't seen it yet or for anybody who just wants to see it again. And we'll uh, see you guys in just a minute. Check out the course trailer for Rethinking Weapon Design. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real-life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, 
build in gorgeous detail and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction, cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Ladies and gentlemen, rethinking weapon design. You just saw the course trailer there again. You're seeing up on your screen a uh, slideshow of all the different deliverables that came out of this course. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different weapons uh, that have been designed. And uh, you, you know all about the course now. What, what do I need to tell you about? No, I. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I think is really cool about this course is, as you can see in that uh, that big fanned out image with all the different uh, weapons and you can see throughout this slideshow is that in the course itself, the main thing that you use to teach students about your workflows is bladed weapons. You know, somebody saying, uh, you know, thinking about the course and saying, well, okay, yeah, this teaches me how to make swords, but could I make a gun or could I make like some other kind of weapon, like a bow and yeah. arrow or, you know, yeah. a cannon. Um, and, you know, that is also something that you address in the course. I think that's a really cool, um, a, a cool idea. So, you know, the course focuses for the purposes of teaching and for the pur purposes of making everything simpler, it focuses on all different kinds of blades. But uh, there's actually yeah. at the end of the course, an epilogue chapter that uh, goes into different kinds of things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um... So after like looking at the tutorial, yeah, that was a concern. Um, I, I think when I first started out, a, a lot of the, after I would watch like a long tutorial, I would feel so confident into approaching my own portfolio, my own artwork. But I did notice I was always re just recreating what I saw in the tutorial. Like I would never branch out of the perspective, the angle, um, the shapes that were used. So. Uh, what we wanted to do is to make some additional uh, content to really show that you can apply this method to anything. And that's why right now I'm just working, I'm using the same exact method that I show you all in the tutorial on these grenades, just to show how you can really use it to explore your imagination and give yourself permission to make mistakes and just have a good time. Yeah, and exploring your imagination is certainly something you are no stranger to. That yeah. you seem to be very confident to just be like doing whatever comes into your head and really quickly turn those into amazing things. Like right now, <laughs> ladies and gents, you see a, a, another concept design being formed in this moment. Yeah, I want to like just really challenge myself to make things that, you know, a lot of this stuff, you don't have to show anyone, right? Um I just like what I, what I want to show you all now are mistakes and happy accidents and things that were intended. Like I, I didn't know this texture was going to give me this look for a grenade, but I'm just following lines and I'm like, I don't know what's going to come out of this, but it's, it's very different than the other two. Um, so, so after looking at these, I'm just like, Oh, this one has to be super different than the rest of them. And what I'm doing now on a professional level is giving my client uh, a lot more options. And that's not even the intention. The intention is just me having fun. It, it is an important thing to note as well, though, that uh, during the course, one of the major kind of milestones that, uh, that you do in the course, and then that there's like an entire homework assignment about it, uh, is creating compelling presentations with your yeah. uh, designs yeah and uh you know as you guys watching the show saw with all of the uh presented images of of those different weapons in the slideshow you can see that it is very important to have that because it really goes that extra mile and and shows off the weapon in the best light 
And uh, I think that's great that, that we have that in the course where you, uh, you take some time to really help with that professional aspect of the workflow. Um, yeah. Not just useful for working, you know, with a client, but even for somebody who's doing their own personal work, you know, your ArtStation page is going to be majorly impacted by how well you present the work at the end of the process. So, you know, having that kind of, uh, uh, you know, discipline for being able to present the work and make it look great is really important. That's a very important skill to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a couple more people uh, posting their projects. Love to see that. Keep them coming, ladies and gents. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Jeff Beckett is designing some curse weaponry, but they're too oh. clean. So seeing your course inspired me. And I love that idea of, yeah, like the idea that what Lewis is doing is able to just like immediately get your, let's say in the digital sense, like get your hands dirty, you know, like just take so many ideas and images and just take your brain and break it <laughs> and, and put it back together and Absolutely. use that to come up with really crazy ideas. Yeah. You know, as you guys are watching this, like keep in mind that, I mean, I'm not sure if you're paying attention exactly what parts of these um, references that I'm grabbing, but I'm trying to avoid grabbing uh, what I call direct reference. So for this handle right here, for instance, I could easily like Google different handles, handles on guns, anything like that, leather straps, something like that. Uh, if you do that, um, it's no different than you drawing from your imagination. So what I, what I try to do is just grab sections that I think are cool and see what, what new thing I can create out of it. So I'm really letting the light determine um, what I'm making with these designs. It is a really interesting aspect of your workflow that there's kind of like a like a Jackson Pollock-esque aspect to it where you're using your subconscious to an extent and like hap like letting things land in a certain spot and saying like that looks great you know like identifying what looks cool rather than uh having to think of it at first you're putting something down and saying, does that work? Does that not work? Like really using the, the subconscious and the, the, uh, the happy accident a lot more than I feel like a lot of other artists might do. Yeah. You know, I think when we're all like kids or anything like that and you're playing, I mean, I don't know if anyone still does this, but like when you're a kid and you play outside using your imagination, right? Like a stick is going to be a lightsaber or like a golf club is going to be your lightsaber. And it's that kind of mentality, right? Like, um, you know, I think his Boba Fett's ship was like uh, a lamppost or something like that, that someone saw, right? And, and that's what turned into the ship. And it's that mentality. So when I look at these references, you're seeing something with like a bunch of spikes and maybe that's what I'm going to use. But I'm actually looking at these circular shapes here with uh, the light that's being cast on the center. Because I'm like, oh, what could that what could that give me rather than what it literally looks like? That is really, you're basically, what you're saying is that you are Cypher from the Matrix and you're seeing past the code. Pretty much Cypher from the Matrix, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Gandhi in the chat uh, with another project, love it. Working awesome. on a sci-fi project focused on human alien cultural exchange. I hope that with this course, I can push oh. even further the hybridization aspect of it i yeah. love that wow curious to see how that turns out exchange it's it's interesting too because like at this stage in the process i i'm interested to know like where do your thoughts lie about sort of uh identifying the storyline aspects of what how your art fits in you know we we talked a little bit at, at the beginning of recording the course about like you know, do you start out saying like, I'm going to make a medieval sword or whatever? Or do you say like, I'm going to make a sword and I'll figure out what culture it belongs to later? Or, you know, how does that work for you? Yeah, actually, that's a really good question. So so what I'm doing right now with these uh, with these sketches is I'm trying to find a story for each one. Um, as soon as I find that story, because when I, I feel like uh, we all run into it when we make our personal artwork. You know, we've heard it time and time again, oh, uh, what's the story? What's the story? I cannot, I mean, 
you could sit down and write a story. And I've seen people do that too. And that's great. I myself, I, I maybe I'm just not that creative. So usually what I'll do is I think what we all do naturally is when you see something, um, especially at a context like a design, you immediately develop a story when you look at it. So what I'm trying to do now is that very thing is I'm creating something that looks cool and interesting. And I want to tell myself what the story is about that, like this grenade. It's just like, oh, so like, how are people going to use this? And I thought like for this one, for instance, the story with this is, yeah, okay, maybe this is a handle at the top. And they punch this, uh, or they either punch this, it can be used as a landmine also. They can punch it into the ground. These things lay out flat, and these will be like triggers for someone to step on. Or they can launch it and, and use this as like a gun and shoot okay. out a, a projectile um, grenade. Um, and this one too, it's just like, how is this going to work, right? I'm still figuring that out. I have a rough idea. And this one came out of nowhere as I was sketching. So I'm trying to figure that out too. I'm like, oh, maybe these like bulbs uh, launch out, right? Maybe that's how they work. And uh, I want to figure out the base too. Like, is this how they charge it? Does it need to be charged? Like how exactly does that work? And uh, so that's what's going through my mind is like three stories at once. That is awesome. So it, yeah. it really is a, an exchange back and forth of like the form follows the function, the function follows the form and they keep informing each other. Kind of like the yeah. competitive aspect you talked about with uh, using different uh, iterations of a project. Like even within one iteration, the there's continuously a back and forth. It's never like, oh, well, this is only going to follow the the function that I want it to serve. It's like, okay, well, if I can come up with a cooler look for that, maybe I'll change what the function is. You know, like that's really fascinating. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm trying to impress myself. It's like a really weird thing. It's just like, all right, make something cool. And that's the, yeah, that's what I'm just trying to do. And what I think is really cool about this too, it, it's not really the focus of the course, but it's certainly something that you uh, mentioned throughout the course is like, for anybody who saw, for example, Lewis's uh, work examples in the trailer, uh, Lewis is experiencing a lot of different types of concept design uh and not just including weapons but all different types of things characters and creatures and uh props and you know all kinds of things so uh these same techniques have really served you in all of those fields it, it's pretty interesting how they can apply to different different uh, disciplines yeah absolutely like um if you think about it like if we really get into it um, I could be, this could be a spaceship that I'm designing. This could be the top-down view of a spaceship and see the fuselage is right here. Um, and you could really, and you know, this is the back end, right? Uh, where the thrusters are. You can really, um, explore your imagination the exact same way. And so once I started realizing that, um, I also, it was easier to send, uh, clients like an idea, like a pitch or like, for instance, right now, my goal isn't to finish a design completely to the point where like, I'm explaining exactly how it works. Uh, my goal is to create um, a visual story. So that way, when I show this to the team, we can have a conversation about what it could be, you know, just really spark everyone's imagination, not just my own. Wow, that's a really cool way to look at it as well. I mean, yeah. uh, ultimately, the job of a concept designer is to inspire, you know, with their concepts and, and taking that, you know, as a, an idea where it's like, okay, well, this really is a collaborative process. Like maybe I don't know what this, you know, thing is completely and somebody else might pick up that part of the, of the process, like creating something evocative almost yeah. is more yeah. important than creating something that's like, you know, exactly what it is. Yeah, usually what I do is um, I, I like I'll have an idea of what it is roughly, and I just won't say anything. And when I turn it in, um, usually what happens is really fascinating and it's really exciting is the whole team. Uh, everyone will come back with a different perspective. They'll be like, oh, I really like how you design this because uh, this is how it could work and this is what it could do and this is what it does. And it would not be my intention at all, <laughs> but hearing how excited people are about something that I had no intention of designing, 
is I feel like the the best moment because everyone's collaborating, everyone sees something different, and whoever's idea that everyone uh, really likes, you know, whatever fits the story the best, uh, we end up rolling with, and then we tweak the design more and more and more, and then we end up making something that's very creative, very collaborative. Uh, yeah, it's just a fun process. Pierre Olivier Martel also getting in there with current uh, current work example. Love it. Working on my first YouTube video. Awesome. And oh, wow. some concepts for a series that I want to do. So a lot Very of painting cool. right now. Very cool. Love Very to cool. see that. The, uh, yeah, the, again, I, I think it's really cool that one thing that we talk about in the, in the trailer is a, a point that you don't hear very often in sort of art um, art courses, which is like, you don't need to know any 3D and you also don't need to be an expert at painting to, to know this. Like you, you can, as you guys are seeing in the, in the uh, demo, essentially you just need to be able to at first make a silhouette and then, yep. it, you know, use all these kind of unorthodox techniques and do a little bit of, sort of painting over but like it's it's really a, a very different um uh ratio of you know painting than uh most art courses you might see can you talk about that a little bit yeah so um at first when i started doing this technique i would really spend a lot of time trying to make like something really pretty and um I would stop being creative, kind of like when I mentioned that I would duplicate my design and just work on it roughly. Um, and then I, I realized that I all the, like this area, if you think it looks cool, I would just, sand, and if it looks, and for me, it looks more realistic. So what I'll do is I would just sample the values that were already here and the colors. And I would use that to, to paint or extend whatever it was that I was seeing. Um, and then it just looked like it belonged to the photo textures um, or it looked like I, I just did that manually. And um, it would just fit so well that I realized that I actually didn't have to like bring out the swatches and like sample colors. And so I was like, okay, I have that. And then with the drawing thing, um, like I, I, I know I can't draw that well. Like I know I can't, but I realized I was pretty good at putting things together. So. So what I started doing is, um, yeah, putting all this photo reference together, making sure that my, I was managing the light source really well and finding references that uh, only supported that idea. And yeah, I realized I could just spend more time designing. I wouldn't draw in perspective. Like imagine drawing this uh, in perspective, it would just like start to get like crazy complicated and You'd have to draw the spikes and stuff like that. And it, it, it would just get way too complicated. And you would just spend the whole day doing that. And once I realized I could do this and people would like it, just saved a ton of time. And ultimately, that's one of the most important parts of a professional workflow is like just a very logistical, like how much time is it going to take? You know, like wh where can I shave off some some time and really make my work more efficient and you found a, a way to not only shave off the time but also make the art even cooler in the process that's pretty good. yeah pretty well, i good, feel that uh, way yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah it, it saved me a ton of time and i i realized that i wasn't spending a lot of time exploring my imagination which was uh i think the one thing that took the longest to learn in my professional career because i just had to meet deadlines all the time and yeah, I would just kind of go with like the first thing that popped in my head and just ran with that because I was worried I wasn't going to have enough time. But once I started doing this and finishing the ideas, um, it, it really changed everything for me because they would be well thought out ideas and I would be excited about the idea also. I wouldn't just be like crossing my fingers, hoping hoping that someone liked it. This, uh, you know, process that you're going into now as well is... Uh is really cool. So you're essentially adding, you know, flourishes to these now that you've defined what you have, and you've added, like you were talking about the, um, you know, the definition that's based on the existing colors that are in those assets. Now you're adding in, you know, flourishes of your own. Can you talk about like, you know, 
wh where you decide to do that and what uh, sparks that? Yeah, so, you know, right now I'm just trying to uh, really, <laughs> it's it's going to sound weird, but I'm trying to force the story out, trying to get it to call out to me. So that way I know uh, what more to do with this design um and what world does it belong in uh what more should i add to make it make sense uh cuz for me right now these this design is like super vague and the last thing i want is to turn something in that makes no sense um so i feel like okay maybe um this or, i mean it wasn't my intention but maybe but now again like i said i'm forcing myself to come up with a story maybe this is going to change color uh, once it's activated and it's going to turn red and the light that's going to be falling off of it is going to be an indicator that it's activated and it's going to explode. Love so that. just really Very trying to force for, it out. And that's yeah. like some of the, you know, knowledge of like when you're working on a movie or a video game and having to understand that like the clarity of that aspect is very important. Yeah, If, if there's a part where you see a grenade, you want to know if it's going to go off or not. Yeah, exactly. And and I'm thinking about that functionality because those questions are going to come up in production. Like people are going to ask you like how does this work? And the last thing you want to do is explain your design. You just want people to know exactly how it works uh just from looking at it. You you really don't want pe you, people guessing or questioning you. Um it just needs to be clear at the first read. And so now we're moving on to the uh design on the right side here what's going through your head as you come off of this design that you've been really polishing uh polishing up and then moving on to one of the designs that's at like a earlier stage of polish what goes through your head there uh you know i'll zoom out to look at this but i'm like oh no this i need to give myself a fresh eye i'm like this isn't working like i mean it could be working but now that i see it freshly it's like okay i need to do these things to it this one wasn't really refined so it's just like i need to start making sense of this design but it needs a bold shape it needs a big bold shape that says like hey that's this is what you're looking at you're looking at this particular design rather than filling it with a bunch of tiny tiny details like like what's going on here is on the edge of too much detail and information. I really need those bold shapes to read immediately. So I'm just trying to, to get that to work right away. Because I, I always need to get excited about the design. That's like the most important thing. It It is also interesting the way that you, um, you know, you're, you're thinking about these things so rapidly between the three designs. Like a lot of artists are working on a design and they have to say like, oh, well, maybe I have to go to lunch or wait till tomorrow and, and or, you know, like take some time, clear my head and then look at it with fresh eyes. But by rapidly switching between these different, uh, these different iterations, you're sort of doing that within a span of like, you know, 10 minutes per design. You're like rethinking yeah. how those designs, the mechanics of those designs work. Yeah, because I can't stop until I'm happy. Like, I, I think one thing that I do professionally is that I'll work on something and I won't even save it, or I should save it now, but I won't even <laughs> uh, save anything until I am legitimately excited about working on it again. So I'll keep on working on something until it clicks. Uh, because if I don't, then I won't be excited to come back to my desk. I won't be excited to uh continue an assignment that i've been working on i'll just like procrastinate um I, you know we've all been there right we're procrastinating on assignment or something like that uh because we deep down we actually don't know where to take it or anything like that and for me i really need to be excited about all of these and if i'm not excited i'll scrap everything and start over and and i'll approach it even faster than i did before because i really need to get that fear out of me I love that too. A lot of great answers on today's show. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, Joseph Thomas, uh, another Matrix reference. I love it. Saying the middle oh, design cool. has a little bit of an echo of the Nebuchadnezzer from the Matrix. And yeah, you know, it's yeah. Nice spelling. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling that too. Uh, I'm impressed that the the spelling of Nebuchadnezzar. I think that is the proper spelling. Also, maybe the hardest word I've ever seen to spell. <laughs> Very impressive. Really, really complicated. Very impressive. Uh, Pierre Olivier Martel saying, uh, um, 
once you have done some iterations and the team has chosen the one to do, do you, uh, where do you go from there? So do you do some perspective shots of the object in Photoshop? And I'll build on that. Uh, first of all, great question, Pierre Olivier. Thank you for yeah. this. Um, because you do go over this in the course a little bit about uh, being able to, once you have like rapidly designed this object in a straight on 2D shot, being able to take that and uh, bring it into another format. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so <clears throat> usually when I do passes like this, I'll address any kind of notes that come from uh, the team. I'll address it in 2D until they like it. Um, or what I'll do, well, what I prefer to do is to just break, bring it into um, ZBrush. So I, I'm sure a, a lot of you would probably work in a way where you just build everything out in a technical way. But what I'll do is I'll just go into ZBrush and sculpt out all of the shapes that you see here in just a single mesh, like every single shape. I won't worry about subtools or anything like that. I'll just create something that looks um, uh, pretty much what I what I imagined it would look like in 3D space. And then I'll just start uh, refining it in 2D. I'll do a render in like Blender or something like that. And then I'll start, excuse me, I'll start um, really trying to add the, all those little details and maybe I'll bring in some photo textures too, just to, um, I guess, I guess for me, this is like the cartoon video game version. And when I start to really refine it with 3D and, Z, and ZBrush and Blender, that becomes the uh, movie version. I think I think a good example, I don't know if anyone remembers this stuff, but like the Power Rangers movie from back in the day, how like the suits were very different from the TV show. That's that's what I imagine I'm doing is like bringing it to life and making it believable. Love that. It's uh, it, it's interesting, too, that like so what you wanted to make sure to focus on in this course is uh, like that part of the process is uh is separate from what we're sort of talking about here today in the course itself like the course covers th this aspect of like making something that is iterated on and designed as quickly and creatively as possible and yeah. uh, i think that's a really cool idea to to focus specifically on that part in a, in throughout the arc of the entire course instead of going into the technical aspects of like if you wanted to um you know take this into into 3d or if you wanted to you know further iterate on it uh in another piece of software um and just focusing on like the art of creativity and the the habit of being creative i i think that it's really cool that what you're teaching in this course is not only how to make incredible designs but also how to become a person who will always make creative designs if that makes sense yeah and honestly that's really the hardest part of the job is being creative um you know a lot of you and you know I was definitely someone that did this quite a bit is when I would do these sketches uh for weapons I would just kind of create just like I would render out everything manually in Photoshop with like an airbrush and I would just um, look at reference and then just kind of try to copy the reference. And my ideas would usually just kind of be the same and I wouldn't really branch out. And yeah, if, if the main reason why I wanted to show people this is because I want everyone to have like a better relationship with their portfolio and their personal art really explore your imagination and have fun and don't worry about how you're going to execute it in the long run. Like the, the idea is just to create something that's going to create a conversation piece when you're with the team. And you'll really be surprised at what you can come up with when you just kind of relax and let yourself explore. Uh, we have JDR in the chat. I got to say, by the way, JDR, the profile name, JDR. Profile picture, giant letters that say JDR. Love the branding. <laughs> Love the branding. Love it. Love uh, it. JDR, they're saying so sick. And yeah, it, it's pretty incredible to think about, uh, you know, we've only been live streaming for, uh, what, how long has the show been going here? Uh, an hour? Uh, oh, and wow. you have 
created three amazing concepts and you're still staying loose with it and changing them up and stuff and like it's the amount of progress that has happened over the course of this one hour is insane like to to consider the amount of detail that is in these pictures and like the the level of fidelity especially in the um the refined images that you have there like it, it is pretty uh pretty crazy to think about doing that if you were doing it not using the photo texturing technique you know, yeah i mean just coming up with the idea is going to be the hardest thing right like if i would have made this silhouette i would have no idea what it meant i would i would have zero <laughs> clue zero clue so now like my plan is just to get all of these to like make sense um to really make sense so that so that's what i'm trying to do right now is get the story down and make sense of each of them i feel like at the end of today's episode we're gonna have to come up with uh with some titles for these weapons too we're gonna have to to uh to name them oh gosh better than what i come up with which is like grenade one grenade two <laughs> weird grenade weird grenade <laughs> weird grenade yeah I would play a video game where that was the name of one of the grenades. Weird grenade. Weird grenade. Yeah, probably be the most popular one, right? Yeah. <laughs> um. So, your uh, you've been jumping over to your pure ref. It's a really important part of your entire workflow. You know, taking your uh, photo textures out of the reference uh, that you've collected, and yeah. uh, we we've touched on it in the sense of how you're using your references. But uh, can you talk a little bit about like? where you're going to find references and uh when you are doing that what you look for in a piece of reference yeah so biggest thing is lighting like that's the number one thing i look for is making sure the lighting isn't too aggressive uh you'll notice that a lot of the reference that i grab has very neutral lighting where the uh, main light source isn't super bright uh if you do that then it becomes much harder. Like, it, like if we take a look at this image, for instance, blending it into the shapes that are there, see how easy that is? Uh, if it was, if the texture was blown out, like if it was a really hot light source, all you would get is very specific details. And you can only use the texture in so many ways. Uh, what you want is to try to get as much uh, information from the photo texture as you can to create something new. And uh, that's that's been like, so that's like one thing I look for. The other is, uh, and I think this is probably the hardest part. That's why in the in the uh, tutorial, like we go over it so in depth, is how do you um, find how do you grab reference that's not just direct bland reference? And uh, by that I mean, like I said earlier, if you're going to grab a handle, if, if you're designing a handle, the last thing you want to do is grab a bunch of handles. What you want to do is grab um, a, a helmet, motorcycle helmet, and say like, hey, this earpiece, like that opens the visor, that's actually going to be the indicator for my grenade. Like that, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to put maybe like um, some additional lights in here um, to indicate that this thing is going to blow up. And that's how I'm going to use that. Um, but if anyone else were to look at this, they probably would just look at the visor reflection or the fact that it's just a helmet. Um, for me, I look at this image because it has uh, ho um, horizontal lines that are patterned and they have uh, an additional light source on top of them, making them feel 3D. That's all I'm seeing. Um, and that's the case for all of these is just the lighting and how it behaves. like. This could be a grenade right here. And this is actually a reference that I use in the tutorial too to make a blade. Yeah, and it's think, purely because of the light. I think we see that one in the trailer, actually. The uh that oh happened. yeah, yeah, it's in the trailer too. Yeah. And it it is really fascinating the way that you're able to because that's a very hard skill to cultivate for a lot of people. Uh and you're teaching very efficiently in the course how to immediately see an image and identify it as something greater than just what it is. You're able to see yeah. the potential of something and not necessarily what the thing is identified as, um, which is really hard. I mean, that's something that artists, you know, try to teach themselves a lot with like when they 
tell you to uh, draw a piece of reference that's upside down or something so that you like remove your mental association from something and you know that that's something people spend a lot of time trying to uh trying to learn uh and you take that completely to the next level not only do you take it totally to the next level but you also teach how to see that way in like i feel like you teach that in the first like 30 minutes of the course and i i saw that part and i was like whoa like i I never thought about things the way that you're talking about them. Like, this is really incredible. Yeah, I, I used to get really, I, I guess I would just handicap myself a lot when I was younger and starting out because I would just really view things in like a literal way when people would teach me, uh, especially about how to how to use reference and how to sketch. I thought I had to sketch out my design in the way that I imagined it in my head. And I never thought I could explore outside of that. And I just, I really ended up making things that I was not excited about. And eventually when I started using more reference in my uh, paintings, I started having all these happy mistakes. So over the years, I was just like, you know what, let me just start doing this a little bit earlier. And, and just like, you know, and then, and then I started looking at reference and I'm like, hey, I need some like, moldy skin for this like zombie I'm making and I remember one of my art directors told me just to grab some um expired cheese and I was like what expired cheese and then looking it up I was like oh and I applied it and I was like oh that does look like that looks way better than the actual like you know gross skin that I was looking up it looked more believable too I love that that yeah. the way that you look at the world reminds me of i don't know if anybody in the chat um used to or still does play tony hawk's pro skater but when uh when me and my friends were kids we would play that game so much that you would start seeing the world in terms of a tony hawk's pro skater level and like <laughs> oh i could grind on that or i could use that as a half pipe or whatever and same with you know, like yeah. assassin's creed games where you start seeing every building as something that you're climbing like, how would I get to the top of this building? Uh, and that's yeah, what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, th that's a great way to put it. Um, and that's something that happens. Like, the more I started doing this, when I would uh, imagine, like, um, you know, whatever it is that I'm, that I'm going to sketch, like, let's say it's the shape, I would imagine uh, grabbing reference and overlaying it on top of this and just imagining what it would look like if I lowered the opacity and seeing all the shapes within that. I'm like, what does that look like? You know, that looks like a blaster that that belongs in this game. And then, and, and that's what started happening. So it became a lot easier to imagine things um, as a finished idea. And, and that really changed the game for me and it allowed me to finish my designs like much faster on the job. Guys, we are getting so much knowledge on today's show. Lewis is dropping some incredible stories and some incredible anecdotes. And uh, can we just get a moment of appreciation for for Lewis Carrasco coming in to not only has he created an amazing course that you guys are going to see uh, coming up, uh, but has also come in here to do this live demonstration and share all this knowledge with everyone. So thank you from me. Thank you so much, Lewis. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm happy to do this. And I really want everyone that's either new to concept or maybe you've, you've been in concept for a while and you've gotten stuck in your portfolio. I definitely have too. And I realized, you know, once I started doing, you know, these little tricks um, like this, you know, it's getting to a point where I could really, you know, add a background to it and polish it a little bit more. And I would be excited to show everyone because it came from my imagination. Like it just developed and it's something I've never seen before. And uh, I want that for everyone to have. Just just excitement to work on your portfolio and to just create cool things for to show off to the world. That sounds like a great moment to... Uh say let's uh for anybody who's just joining the show you're hearing all this amazing knowledge you're hearing all these amazing stories what are we talking about here today a new course from lewis carrasco on learn squared the course is called rethinking weapon design and this is all about going into lewis's very unique uh workflow for creating weapons quickly and creatively uh and really just 
using every part of your brain, every part of your imagination to create some incredible, incredible concept designs. So um, this course is available now for pre-order on the Learn Squared site. We just announced it today. So uh, that's really, really exciting. The course is coming out on June 13th. So not too far away, ladies and gents. Yeah, Get hyped for out. that. That's what, two weeks from now? So June yeah, 13th, you'll be able to, to uh, start learning from this course, but uh, you can pre-order it on the site right now. So get in there, get your pre-orders in, make sure you don't miss out. And uh, for anybody who might just be joining the show, why don't we take another look at the course trailer? Because that's going to do a much better job at explaining the course than I ever could. So let's go take a look at that, ladies and gents, and we'll see you in just a sec. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction, cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Ladies and gentlemen, rethinking weapon design. You just saw the trailer right there. We have some love in that chat as well for uh, Lewis. Guys, you're seeing some amazing stuff here. You're, what you're looking at on screen right now are the finished products from the course. It's uh, scrolling through a slideshow of different weapons that were created during the course. A lot of totally gorgeous work. Uh, Sandra saying thank you. Marcel Zero saying thanks for sharing a bit of your workflow. Great stuff. It's so cool to see uh, everybody's hype for this course and all your questions. And, and it really is an honor to have you on the show, Lewis, to uh, share your knowledge with us. Yeah. So with that said, we're going to jump back into the demo. Let's let's uh, let's see it. So we're back Great. in here. Lewis is uh, for anybody who is you know now joining the show. Lewis is working on a live demonstration of three different, never before seen types of grenades. So designing uh, with the use of all of Lewis's massive font of creativity. Uh, as creative a grenade design as possible. And uh, these are pretty incredible. So uh, can you uh, sort of update us on, on where we are in the process right now? Yeah, so uh, usually, you know, when I first start out, it's super loose, you know, it gets intimidating, like creating something, trying to create something that no one has seen before. And uh, for the first chunk of time, like I'll really let myself come up with super abstract shapes and try to push the silhouette and everything and I'll get to a point where I have an idea where the direction is going to go so I'll start uh, beginning to refine the idea and you can kind of see that here where I'm starting to refine and uh, then I'll hop back and it, it's it's interesting because it, I'm kind of informing myself of what it means to refine something so it's just like oh okay I know what to do on this one to start refining it and I'll try to bring it to this level and then um, I'll, I'll again, they'll all start to compete with each other and I'll try to see which one I can make the coolest. And then I'll start like putting it into a kind of like in a nice uh, pr presentation layout. Ooh, so we'll get a little bit of presentation on today's show as well. I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm going to shoot Ooh, my okay. shot. <laughs> wow. We're going from all the way from zero to a fully finished piece then. Yeah, that's that's the goal. That's the goal, or at least presentation piece. How about that? We'll call it presentation piece. <laughs> uh, we have, by the way, another update on a project. Oh, cool! 
Love to see that. Thank you guys for uh, letting us know about your projects and keep them coming. We want to hear about them. Hawks Tom, welcome to the show, saying working on a project with futuristic gladiators in a dystopian setting. Definitely going to use these techniques for an upcoming sword and mace design. Amazing. Ah, okay. That'll be interesting. Yeah, I'd like to see that for futuristic sure. Futuristic gladiators. Wow. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm definitely curious to see what that's going to look like. Like, are they going to have a ton of armor? Or like, what direction are you going in? Yeah, that's exciting. Please uh, keep us updated on all everybody who has mentioned a project on today's show. We want to see you on the next live stream to update us on how your project is going. We want to see pictures. We want to hear stories. Keep, uh, keep us updated. These are yeah. all fascinating. So uh, these, is that one from a model kit? You were mentioning that there was like a section of your Pure that was model kits, right? Yeah, I found a bunch of like model kits. Um... But it's 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 really not the uh, kit itself. It's actually the light that I'm looking at. I, I'm never I'm never actually aware of what I'm uh, actually grabbing. Like I I have no idea what these are. But if the light is behaving the way I need it to for the image that I'm working on, I'll grab it just to describe that particular section rather than me manually painting it. Yeah, I love that, and that's another instance, ladies and gentlemen, of like. The way that this workflow can really speed up your art making process because you know the 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 traditional way of thinking about it is like oh yeah well if i wanted to make this look 3d and you know have like lighting or whatever i would you know paint in that lighting but you're actually just extracting the concept of the lighting from a three pre-existing 3d image and just using yeah. that for its lighting data, pretty much. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because I'm just like, oh, I need a panel here. And I need to draw a panel line. It's like, okay, if I draw it in, then it's not going to make sense. It's, it's just going to be a, a sketch line like everything else. So if I add a little light to it, then it creates a layer of depth. And I might get a happy accident out of it that could inspire the next stage of, uh, of me working on it. That's awesome. Yeah. We have uh, a lot of love in the chat we had uh, a bunch of thanks in the chat and we also have pierre olivier martel coming in and saying thanks a lot for everything it really oh, cool it's, everybody's excited on here it 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 is a uh amazing stream i gotta just say i, I i'm having a great time on today's show I, i'm learning a lot <laughs> yeah i feel like i'm teaching myself too so <laughs> i'm like oh yeah i do do that one really um inspiring and amazing thing about your uh, artistic career, Lewis, is that uh, you're able to do your art from anywhere. You, uh, yeah, you know, sort of work off of a laptop, living all around the world. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So um, you know, at a certain point, I just realized that there was really nothing keeping me. Uh, living where I was living so I thought okay I'll, I'll just try like traveling for a little bit because I had never been to Europe and um, I just thought that would be a really cool adventure so yeah I just I just kind of like shot my shot and uh, I traveled to Europe and I was curious about working off of a laptop and it turned out to work out great and I really loved it and I noticed I was producing work much faster like I was finishing my assignments faster and I was really pushing my creativity and when I was when I would be like on a lunch break or something like that I would walk outside and I wouldn't be at my desk in my apartment anymore I would be <clears throat> in a totally different country totally different cafes museums and I would just walk back <clears throat> totally re-energized to um, take on my next task because I would just be so excited to be creative. That is really so not only are your, you know, different designs, you're iterating on these designs, they're competing with each other to keep inspiring you. But then you look out your window and you're in like a crazy other place and just like inspired by everything. Yeah, yeah. And and I love it. It's it's a very addicting feeling. And um, yeah, I just can't stop. I just love it. And, and, you know, you meet a lot of other travelers, too, that felt the same way. I don't run into too many artists. Like, it's it's kind of rare. But when I do, it's always so exciting. That's awesome. Hey, that's a that is a very aspirational thing to shoot for for any of us artists in the who are watching today's show. Like, 
you could be doing uh, this kind of amazing art and living an amazing like rock star lifestyle. <laughs> Going yeah, yeah I guess cool yeah <laughs> I don't know if it's rock star I definitely have my days where I'm sitting uh, like on my at my desk and I'll just be watching Netflix <laughs> seeing what's what's going on on YouTube and stuff like that <laughs> hey rock star has got to watch Netflix too right <laughs> that's true Everybody that's true <laughs> so what's um kind of the uh thought process right now with the weapon that you're working on uh trying to make it uh much cooler like i'm trying to make the silhouette really pop um because when i show this to the team or whoever's looking at it, when i show it to you all at the end i want everyone to really not know which one is like their favorite like i want everyone to to be excited about each design and to inspire a design or or maybe uh the client or whoever i'm working with will decide like hey you know what we we like all of these. Let's um, let's use them for different things. Let's not limit ourselves to a grenade. Um, and then that's really exciting because you know that it was time well spent, and um, yeah, and and that exploring your imagination, you know, was like the best thing you could do. Um, now that we've moved over to this grenade, I want to mention a great comment from Pierre Olivier Martel, who, uh, if you guys recall, we uh, put out an open call for people to suggest names for the different grenades and uh this one would be known as the caterpillar grenade oh the caterpillar grenade that is okay that's actually really interesting that that okay let's let's work with that that's actually kind of cool oh okay so pierre olivier martel is actually now inspired part of the design process so thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, because I, I didn't know where to go with it. And like, yeah, hearing that, I'm just like, oh, okay. Caterpillar, that's interesting. And so is there ever a uh, piece of reference? There's a part in the course that uh, where you talk about certain pieces of reference that you will look at and then you'll say, oh, I actually can't really get anything from this because it's giving me too much information you know you, you talked about earlier um making sure that the lighting's not overly harsh but one of the things you also focus on in the course is making sure that the reference doesn't have too much distinguishing data in it um, yeah yeah for example like a really strongly defined design in the reference might actually hinder the photo texturing process can you talk about that yeah, so um, one thing that I definitely re recommend everyone being careful of is if you grab something that you like because it looks cool, make sure that you're not grabbing it because it's a cool design. <laughs> uh, because what will end up happening, of course, is you'll end up just kind of keep when you overlay it, you'll end up, I mean, it may not happen every time, but you might end up just emulating the design of the reference. And you really want to stay away from that. And just remember that we're grabbing um, light sources and big, bold light areas, right? That's what I'm always looking at. I'm looking at these big shapes. Um, like this might have too much detail, but I was like, oh, maybe I can get something from it. Um, if I were to grab like an Iron Man suit or something like that, then it would be very iconic shapes and it would just take away from my design and I wouldn't be able to have that freedom. So neutral light and um, interesting shapes that are together, but they don't exactly um, make something that's recognizable is really important. This is the uh, This is the famous gas mask right here. Yeah, you know, it's just the lighting is so nice and it has the right balance of complexity and uh, neutral shapes. So I like to grow every now and then if I if I feel like a design isn't uh, looking cool enough, I'll just go in and I'll try to do something really bold like this to see if I can come up with something. Then I'll turn it on and off. And I'll be like, huh, can I get anything out of that? Then I'll hover over everything else. And yeah, it's it is famous or famous. It is interesting to see how totally like you'll use this gas mask multiple times, but the designs at the end will look completely different from each other. Yeah, they won't you look would like never it know at all. that they yeah. all came from yeah. one 
mask. Yeah. Um, and in this case, I'm, I'm just going to use the lighting from it because it's super useful. And, and like the shapes are undefined up there anyway. So um, yeah, reference like that um, really, like you'll notice now it's feeling more believable, right? And it's because the lighting is being cast from above. And now it's starting to really uh, take, take shape for me at least. And so is there like, um, when you think about things like this, we were talking about utilizing or or rather like retroactively assigning like sort of ideas about how the weapon works or or how it's used and where, uh, you know, all, all these different aspects of like the, the way the weapon works. But do you ever think about like the, you know, civilization that might have crafted it or or things like that like uh kind of extrapolating the weapon into other things at this stage or do you wait for the team to say like hey i think this would be cool if we designed a gun that was like using this concept or something like that yeah good question so um i really try to keep it as vague as possible for myself um if I start really getting into the nitty-gritty of like the story behind a weapon and I mean, this is just me personally. If I, if I start really getting into the hardcore details about something, what I noticed is that whole precious thing that I mentioned earlier starts to really come out of me. And I won't explore anything because I feel like I'm deviating from an idea. What I go for is the emotion. So sometimes like I'll listen to music too and uh, like, like see these pointy shapes are creating kind of like a threatening feeling, right? So it's just like, okay, that's now the motif. That's the feeling that I want. So I'm going to make sure that feeling is like very clear in this design. And um, it's it's all like sticking together. Uh, if I go into like, oh, this is used by, you know, a soldier when he does this and this and this, or this is like uh, a cherished weapon from this time period. And this is what it was used for. Um, I could just end up intimidating myself and not knowing where to start or where to finish because it'll never be right. And and if I'm not happy, then it, I feel like it's very clear in the design that I'm not happy and I'll start getting a bunch of notes. And um, and then, you know, what could happen is, you know, as a concept artist, you're trusted to to be the leader and uh, you and the art director are trusted to to come up with a visual representation of whatever it is that you're making. And if you don't uh, take the time to make sure that that's recognizable visually from the get-go, then what could happen is, is I, I feel like this happens for sure, is you end up putting that responsibility on the person that hired you. And, and they hired you for a reason. So it, it becomes this battle of regaining their trust and letting you control a design and getting it to make sense visually. So just make sure the feeling is there when someone sees it. And, and that's what I try to stick with. A great comment from uh, Pierre Olivier Martel as well, uh, mentioning it's amazing how you can come up with so much so quickly that they can't wait to get to that level. And uh, yeah, I, I will uh, say that as well, that like you are taking all these designs and iterating on them and like uh you know drawing over them and coming up with something else and like the designs that you will make and then like delete are better than anything i could come up with as a finished design like you're, oh, you're just going through funny. so many incredible things it's it's really amazing to see that's so funny because i'm like oh my god you're taking forever <laughs> like how are you not done yet that's what i keep telling myself I'm like yeah you should be done by now man like it's like okay it's live take it easy <laughs> well you heard it here ladies and gents if you take this course you can design it even faster than this <laughs> i mean for me it's just like I, I try to get to a point where i'm just like do you think this is cool it's like yeah i think it's cool and if i think it's cool um, just from looking at it, then I know my friends or whoever else is going to look at it thinks it's cool. If I stop at a point where I'm like, I don't know if this makes sense and I have to explain it, it's unsuccessful. It's like, okay, let, let's spend a little more time. Um, that's why I want to make sure I get some of these to a point where we can all look at it together and be like, okay, like, uh, you know, I'll write that these are grenades, 
but it'll have like this look where you're curious about it rather than trying to guess what it is, you know? Yeah. And it, 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 like the, the refinements that you're doing on this, like just evoke so many different things as well. It's, it's really cool. Like that little piece at the bottom beneath these, uh, talons on the right side grenade it feels like something that could even detach from it and like plant into the ground or something like, there's so many cool things that come out of it and it yeah not even my intention but <laughs> but that's that's what i mean is like everyone sees something different and and that's my job is to get you excited about uh whatever it is that i'm making how do you like um because we've talked a lot about cultivating the creativity to just really think outside of the box and and keep thinking about uh photo textures in different ways but i mean you, you talked about um your team seeing your uh images that you create and they're inspired to sort of like further the storyline of things and and come up with ideas that you didn't think of and then i guess i just did that right there as well yeah of, of having different ideas and you know how are you able to confidently come up with these things that like knowing that you're not going to know everything about this design, how do you uh, make the judgment call about these things? So for me, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the questions have to be answered uh, for myself it, or I have to have these bullet points. It's like, okay, how do you use this? It's like, okay, this is the handle. So it looks like you can throw it. So immediately people will probably like gravitate towards that. Um, there are these like, yeah, weird light things that I have on there, but that's open to interpretation. For me, my interpretation was like, this is like some kind of indicator that it's going to explode, but I'm not going to tell anyone that I'll let people come up with it on their own, but it's, it's just the right amount of vagueness. And here I'm just like, okay, this looks like a handle. And then these spikes is just like, this very thing that's also sparking curiosity right and then these things here at the bottom these here at the bottom all sparking curiosity but in terms of grenades it has the bulb right we have that um this has the bulb too right and also if your task is that these are grenades it's already going to be viewed as a grenade uh, if i were to show these just like randomly without context people would be like oh what is this um, and that's that's always the case when you're designing something no one has seen before, right? Um, so as long as I hit those things, uh, when I get notes, and it, it could be to indicate even more that these are grenades, or I may have to collage some of these together to create something new, but it's just the right amount of information, and I made sure I hit those bullet points, so that way um, I know I'm covered. Like when I show the team, I'm like, yeah, this is this is pretty much how it works. Um, or if they have a brief and they show you the brief and they're like, hey, this is how the grenade's supposed to work. And it's like, okay, I'll just go off of that. Um, but I'm going to explore outside, uh, just outside of that a little bit, uh, but not deviate from the idea. And um, yeah, and, and that's what I do is just try to try to, you know, just hang around like the edge of of what it's supposed to be. You're living outside the box. Yeah, just outside of it. Yeah, that's where it's just, you know, awkward enough, you know. This is very fascinating. This this whole course, um, you know, seeing the 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 course in its entirety and, and seeing your process, it's really a, a workflow and a, a thought process that, you know, I feel like just sparks a lot of creativity for anyone watching it, I'm sure you guys watching the show feel the same. Uh, it, it's a really inspiring way to approach the art making process. Do you have any uh, artists who you look up to or who you admire? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, and we go over this in the tutorial too, but I think that the artists that I admire the most have been people that help me uh, you know I, I feel like it's people that help me discover more of who I am like um you know I, I actually I don't think I mentioned the tutorial oh no I did mention the tutorial like um 
I think it's Gabriel Jimenez. I think that's his name. I'm, I'm on the spot, so I can't remember his name, but he created um, these very like retro medieval designs. And when I saw those, I, I, I think when I think of like concept art that was developed in the past, I always just think about like Star Wars and Ralph McQuarrie stuff. But when I saw his work, I was just blown away because I'm just like, I didn't know that people really pushed the possibility of a design like that far. And I think that seeing those things like really encourages me to explore my imagination and know that there's no limit, like really go as far to push myself as far as I can uh, to make something that's iconic. And, you know, you'll hear that a lot, like when you're on different projects is they'll tell you to make something iconic. But to really make something iconic is to have a combination of a good story and have a design that has the courage to push past what you would see in a video game or a movie. Like this design, for instance, I promise you, you would never see this in a game or a movie. You've never seen this in a game or a movie. And and that is my ambition is like, hey, this is weird. We may not know exactly how it works, but maybe this right here, this area right here, maybe these are little bits of grip and that, and, it, and for some reason, the characters need that to really grip the grenade and shoot it out. Or maybe they squeeze it and then these shoot out or something like that. And, and they need that to, and all of these are actually the trigger rather than a single button being the trigger, right? And then that's like creating all these rules for that world and really changing the possibilities of what uh, something could be. And if if the story is successful, then from then on, every time you start designing something, it's no longer, hey, that looks like Master Chief or that looks like it's from Halo. It's like, no, this grenade is now a part of that world that someone designed because it's so iconic. So we have uh, been going through three iterations of a design uh, and sort of jumping back and forth between each of these three. And uh, do you typically find that three is kind of the magic number for uh, iterating or wh what, what do you usually gravitate towards when you're creating a design? I usually do three. Um, and I think three is a good number. I mean, on sometimes I'll do two. If it's like, if I really need to make sure that they need to look uh, very polished and polished and fresh, but for the, I would say a majority of the time, like more than, you know, 95% of the time I'll do um, just three designs, three designs that look very different from each other, that they have their own shape language and that they can really spark a conversation. So I'll just kind of like stay in that realm. What are some examples um, that you, I'm sure you've had some moments where you turn in a design to the team and it would just like, you know, as you've mentioned, like go in a direction that you never even expected for the design. Like, do you have any moments in particular that you remember where somebody suggested something that was like, wow, that I didn't even, didn't even think about that. All the time, all the time. Like for me, like, I'm just trying to have a good time make painting these like that's that's all I care about is just having a good time and whenever I show these um, you know people have these ideas of what it could be and yeah I you know, usually I feel like if they just like it and they come up with the idea I'm cool with it I'm like I don't care what you're saying like I'm, I agree <laughs> as long as you're happy with whatever it is that I made and uh, that's enough for me but yeah sometimes uh I think that's my favorite part is hearing what is coming out of the imagination of like the team I'm on because I never would have thought of that. And a lot of times, like, I feel like a majority of the time, their ideas actually for what it could be is better than mine or not better, but I think it's because it, you know, having like a fresh idea of what it could be for me, it's just like so exciting to hear. And um, I end up falling in love with whatever they came up with. Uh, Pierre Olivier Martel saying, uh, excuse me for my name, I'm from Quebec, Canada, so French names are weird in English, but you say it well. I'm glad to hear that. I'm very glad. I always try to pronounce people's names right, but I appreciate when 
you know, when someone lets me know that I did it right or wrong, I always try oh, to do yeah, my best. Nice. So <laughs> thank you for the, thank you for the, uh, the vote of confidence. And thank you to everybody who's, um, you know, asking a lot of great questions. Uh, we love to see you posting about your projects. I'll say it again to, um, you know, anybody who might just be joining the show that throughout the show, we've been asking people in the comments to let us know what projects they're working on uh, or what projects they are inspired to work on by seeing this new artistic process. So feel free to post anything that you, um, you know, you are working on or want to work on in that comment section. We always love to hear from you guys. And um, it's really just great to see all the positivity in, in the chat. You know, the, you never know when you're on the internet. with like, Yeah, yeah, I have no idea chats. what's going on. So yeah, it's like, <laughs> if you feel good. <laughs> so thank you to everybody for being amazing. The, the Learn Squared audience it is always just like full of incredibly creative people and incredibly positive people uh, celebrating each other. So, you know, when you guys are uh, taking Lewis's course, make sure that you... Uh, or taking any course, make sure that you submit your homework, submit your work. Everybody wants to see what you're making, not just us at Learn Squared, but your fellow students always love to see, you know, what you're making and, you know, make sure to comment on other people's work and really keep those conversations going because, uh, you know, it, it's not only useful to um, hear from people and hear what people think, but you never know, like, you know, you never know where, um, where connections are going to come from, like networking is really important. You might end up yeah. commenting on somebody's post who later recommends you for a job or something. You never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, um, that definitely happens. Yeah. So yeah, like, um, you know, stay positive and, and, and keep making cool stuff and keep, uh, you know, sending that positivity back out into the world, ladies and gents. Uh-oh. We're in the presentation phase now. Yeah, I got to let you guys uh, get back to what you're doing at some point. <laughs> I could watch this all day. This is amazing. The, uh, the, the thing you just did right there is really interesting. And you talk about this in the course as well, where when you're in the stage to present your work on top of a background, you're kind of like similar to how you do the photo textures. You're just taking a um existing photograph and like abstracting it to the nth degree until it just looks like a really cool you know sort of like uh gradient background yeah like a gradient or something like that just to you know presentation is like a really big deal and you know if you you're working so hard and you know usually i'm like pretty tired after like spending so much time um you know you're mentioning how quickly I'm iterating. It's because I'm like thinking so quickly and I'll, I'll get burned out, you know? So I will make sure that I present my designs in a way that's very appealing because that first impression is like such an important thing. And you don't want to spend all that time working and just have people kind of focus on, uh, you know, like some painting mistakes or something like that. You just want people to look at this and view it as finished right away. And look, I, I clearly did not finish, um, but I could, like, I could take the time. But again, the goal isn't to make like a finished concept image. The goal is to create an impression or a mood to get a conversation going. Yeah, and that's also part of the uh, kind of discipline and and experience of being a artist working in a, you know, a fast paced competitive field. You know, like there, I'm sure a lot of that stuff comes from understanding like yeah like i could spend the extra time on this but ultimately it's better to just put it in front of people um w you know without finishing like you were just pointing out like a particular little area or something because you might end up changing that area anyway yeah exactly um don't f don't fall in love or marry a design it could completely change um that's why it's really important just to try to stay loose have fun make sure it's like it's making sense when you first look at it make make areas pop that you want people to take interest in and um yeah and just go from there because you're gonna have to 
you know, start refining, or maybe you're going to have to do a new set of images. And you just want to make sure you balance out your day and just, you know, again, it's all about having fun and enjoying uh, the process. This is just incredible seeing everything you've done here today. And uh, oh, great. one thing that I want to make clear to everybody watching the show, which we haven't really mentioned uh, on the episode, but so the course is coming out on June 13th, Rethinking Weapon Design. The course comes out June 13th, so that's two weeks from now. And what Lewis has just created on the show today is totally new. This is not a design that he's been working on before. This is not a design that's in the course. But uh, what we're going to do is Lewis is actually, uh, during the entirety of today's live stream, has been recording uh, locally, recording his screen on OBS. So we're actually going to add the full real time, you know, without uh, us cutting away to different things and, you know, just a real time video of this entire artistic process. We're going to add that as bonus material to the course. So yeah. you guys will be able to watch this and really take it apart piece by piece. And that's, I'm really excited to do that, <laughs> to go back and, and really watch this, uh, you know, in real time uh, and, you know, through its entirety. So there will be even more content in, in the course when yeah, it comes out. Look yeah. forward to that, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing stuff. This is just so cool. Oh, so now we're in the stage of adding the text here. So we have to, yeah. uh, I guess we need our, our weapon names, finally. Should we uh, oh gosh, give I'll the let chat you a chance to, yeah. to come up with these names? We had a pretty great uh, name for the left side weapon, which was the Caterpillar Grenade. I love that. The Caterpillar Grenade. If anybody, you guys are able to see the screen right now. It, if anybody has any ideas for our uh, A, B, or C weapons, let us know your suggestions in the comment section below. And uh, before we um, before we close out the show, we'll give people a little bit of time to sort of think about think about <laughs> names for these uh, for these grenades. I might also suggest a couple possibly. We need like a sci-fi caterpillar name. Like what what could like uh, you don't want to you don't want to make it too literal because they're gonna be like, that doesn't look like a caterpillar. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. Now, yeah, we gotta think about that then, but. While you guys think about it, let's uh, give you a little bit of time by uh, taking another look at that course trailer. So think about those ideas, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, you know, get those ideas flowing and take another look at the trailer. Here we go. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. All right, ladies and gents, we are back to Lewis's screen here with the uh, grenade concepts uh, that we have on screen. And, uh, oh, we just added another, another little uh, post-processing stage here. What was that? Uh, yeah, that so... Did? I like to add um, some poster edges um, to the uh, roughs, just so that way they feel a bit more like drawings. Because the last thing I want is for whoever's looking at it to feel like it's a finished idea. And I feel like this re, um, or, or like I do this to 3D sometimes. I just really want people to focus on the design and not 
judge how finished it is. So I add this like additional texture just to make people really feel like it's a sketch. And, and you can see it does feel like a sketch, like I just colored it in or something. Wow, I love that. Just yeah. right at right at the uh, right at the end. Love it. Yeah, and then I'll like sharpen a little bit. Um, let's see. Turn these off. This is in the filter gallery, and I'll just add paint daubs, you know, just to add a little sharpness, and I'll turn that down quite a bit. And it's just like you could see it. It's like so subtle. See a little sharpness. <laughs> Just to add a little, you know, oomph. Now, uh, we have a suggestion for our center weapon here, our center grenade. From okay. Pierre Olivier Martel wants to call it the Oblivion. Oblivion for the centerpiece? For the centerpiece. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good title. Yeah, yeah. That actually fits really well. Yeah. The Oblivion. Wow. So that thing's going to be a pretty powerful grenade with a name like that. The oblivion. Yeah. I want to call the the right one something that's like I don't know. Yeah, like the the death handle, something like the death grenade handle. names are kind of fun to come up with now. <laughs> Let's see how it looks. <laughs> it's getting there. It's okay. getting there. <laughs> Now I just want to call everything the death the death caterpillar. <laughs> mm, yeah, what? caterpillar could be cool. I think caterpillar. I I feel like could be cool because that's a terrestrial thing, but it yeah. could be like in Starship Troopers where they like call the aliens bugs or whatever. Is this spelled right? Even though a caterpillar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Love it. Oh man! So we're gonna add the um, unedited video of Lewis's screen recording of today's show to the course as bonus material. So you guys can, you know, take that apart and examine it uh, when you are taking the course. And we're going to add the um, finished image to the course files as well so that you guys can really inspect that in full resolution. So much thanks to Lewis for coming on today's show and doing this live demonstration for us today. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Let's get some hearts in that chat, some love. I'm going to post some hearts as well in the chat. I love posting emojis. Awesome. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing to do on, on a live stream. Uh, but yeah, it, it's been amazing. Guys, Rethinking Weapon Design from Lewis Carrasco is now available for pre-order on the Learn Squared site. You can go on the site right now. You can read all about it on the course page, and you can get your pre-orders in so that you will be fully prepared for the course when it comes out on June 13th. Keep your eyes out for that. Go check that out. You can find the course trailer as well on our YouTube channel, uh, where you'll be able to, you know, see it again in case we didn't show it to you enough times already. Yeah. Uh, it's always, you know, <laughs> worth watching one more time. I approve, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> so go check that out. Make sure you check out Rethinking Weapon Design on June 13th. And guys, that is going to do it. Thank you to everybody in the chat for being amazing, having so many great questions, for sharing your projects with us, trusting us with your with your amazing uh, project ideas. We're really excited to see where all of your projects go. And I really hope, I'm sure Lewis hopes as well, that you have come out of today's stream being even more inspired to create great things. Yeah. Thanks again, everyone. With that, Let's go one more time to the course trailer. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction, cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. 
And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquared.com.